Hello everyone. Um, so I've been asked to share my experience about um, on about curriculum design and how um, we as a department uh, work towards um, submitting our recent qualification that was postgraduate diploma. Uh, my name is Shweta Patnak. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Clothing and Textiles. Um, in the engineering faculty and I'm here to share my experience on how curriculum design and especially the workshop that we were in assisted us in making it a success. So uh, we were part of the workshop um, earlier in the year which we winded up in June and uh, I'm sorry in July and uh, we were really privileged to be part of that workshop because it um, enhanced our knowledge to a much higher level than we actually thought we were and um, we could see things with in a different perspective and this actually helped us in building up our curriculum um, within our department as well. So um, when we were um, asked to enroll for the workshop on HEQSF um, and we were there and like the first question that came to our mind is like, do we really call it curriculum design? Is it curriculum design for us? Because um, the moment we were part of that workshop, um, there was this um, self-awakening of, oh, we don't know this. We don't know that. We haven't heard about this. And after knowing that we don't know, we had that question of now, how do we work out? How do we make sure that we still learn and understand everything and make it to creating and designing a curriculum or a qualification. And um, the fear of being fearful, I mean, honestly, it was for us to realize that um, there are many things that we don't know. And uh, we had that fear that what now? Because we're sitting in a platform with so many other people and assuming that they all knew at least more than what we knew when it comes to qualification and curriculum design and all that goes into the nitty gritty part of it. So that was a fear in the mind. And then um, being part of that session, um, especially the first session, the question was like, are we in the right place? Do we think that what we're doing and the way we are is the way we're supposed to be? Or is it something that we weren't supposed to be here? And again, did we really learn and design our new curriculum? Yes, we did. And um, like I said, we just recently submitted our postgraduate diploma for our qualification. So, yeah, we attended the workshop, we made it happen, and we submitted the qualification as well. Um, running down through all the sessions that we were part of, so there were a total of nine sessions, face-to-face -face sessions, and obviously some online um, tasks and submission and homeworks. So the first session was really the scariest of all the all of the sessions because um, somehow we knew who the facilitator is going to be and the knowledge that they have in this field and we were like so um, naive and amateur in the field that uh, we were going to be exposed to so we were very scared and um, then um, sitting in that session by the end of the session like I very clearly remember right in front of my eyes, like um, it, it kind of felt like it was a paradigm shift of mindset. Um, it's not about how much you know, how much you don't know, what can you give in form of input to your qualification um, as a team or as a curriculum officer. It's more about the mindset that you change and delve more into knowing things that you feel is necessary at that point of time. Um, the second thing and most important was moving on from the teacher center to the student center. Yeah, we obviously um, do it in reality when we're lecturing, but um, it was more of moving from instruction to construction. So um, try creating uh, the atmosphere of constructing with students, with colleagues, with um, um, staff in the department, to rather being instructive because it really helps in building up the curriculum. And uh, the main part was asking the why questions, the what, the where, and the how, in terms of why and what and how we're going to build up that qualification, where are we um, going further after that, what all we need to know, why we know and why we don't know, and how do we think we can know what we are supposed to know. So. 
yeah that was like an eye opener in the first session um the second session was like the tagline that I added that did we just co create because we felt that even within a faculty uh, we function as different because each department has its own um, niche and specialization so um, when we sat in a educative platform which was institutional and people from different faculties um, were part of it it was kind of luxury for us because uh, we could um, since that we were in a group of like minded people who were going through the same journey that we were or that you all are in now and that we are co-creating together so it doesn't necessarily have to be people from your area of discipline or from area of specialization you can still co-create and build up um together for the future so yeah it was literally co-creating the third session was um when we were used to the workshop uh, we were used to curriculum design we had done few homeworks then we had gone back to our department got feedback from the hods got feedback from the stakeholders so we sort of knew where we stand and um, then in that session we were introduced to comparative analysis we were um, given a whole lot of um, information in terms of how this should come about with um how should do we see it nationally how do we see it within the institution how do we see it internationally so the mainly the the macro meso and the micro part of it and then um the articulation um i mean honestly i couldn't um have known about articulation happening in various levels if i wasn't part of this workshop because there is diagonal there is vertical there is horizontal articulation and how we actually are widening access of higher education in our specialization and making sure that we address to a wider um, range of people from the industry or from the community and bring them into the qualification and see if they could enhance their knowledge and their critical skills while doing that and why is it important to know because um, we need to know that how um, um, accessible our qualification is and how much it's not and what can we do to make it accessible because it's all about um making sure that we have a wider access not just directly to the field that we in but also to the field that we are um related to um session 4 was when um like it was almost over a month by then we were um in the previous slide like i explained we were used to the vibe of being in that workshop for um wednesday morning and we were used to um uh, people we were used to the the knowledge that was being shared in that platform so session 4 was about um admission policies so um that gave us a uh, access to knowing more about the policies um which entails around admission the minimum requirements the admission requirements what we need to have how much um weightage do we need to allow and then rpl um as you most of it would knowing it's recognition to prior learning so do we rpl our qualification if so why and if not why so um it's basically knowing again from the previous slide widening access so if we giving that access do we have to rpl them because for example in our qualification um so the post graduate diploma is completely new for all of us but in the qualification there will be people who will be enrolling into the speech dip um whenever it starts running in full fledge where people would be having a old beta qualification but they would be having some industry experience so do we rpl them do we give them um credit transfer if they coming from a related field um similar to that of ours and if we do how much is allowable so all of that was um discussed and shared with us uh, which actually helped us in building up more on our qualification um seeing um with a different uh, like seeing th- um the qualification wearing literally like a different pair of glasses and seeing it in terms of credit transfer and rpl session 5 um was the most favorite part for me because um and that is what i bought in back like my take home um was the knowledge tree so 
as like any other tree a knowledge tree just looks like a tree with tree branches and flowers and leaves and everything but it's more to do with how we build up knowledge and how we create the roots of knowledge firm enough that when we branch them out it really speaks um, exactly what it should speak um so the knowledge tree was um, a real take home day and we were introduced to the purpose statement so the purpose of your qualification where we really have to explain why we even bring you out this qualification um within our expertise is there even a need for it so we have to highlight on that um the program design how do we design our program um in what form are we going to provide our program and then um knowledge economy i mean that was a word that i have been using often in the qualification that we build up recently because like i lecture economics as one of the subjects and i know economy but when <coughs> excuse me when we were said knowledge economy i was like now what is this now because this is completely something knowing but not knowing so it's more about the context and the concept that goes into building up knowledge in your field of expertise and giving that access and making sure that you build up that economy with people who have been part of that qualification and they have gained access and it's like building up a knowledge of of a pool of uh, people in the economy um, that you're specialized in who will in future help and assist um, taking it further session 6 was um about teaching and learning theories that's when we literally put our engineering hats down because that is not what we do as engineers so it was the theoretical side of teaching and learning and we had to really understand what are the theories that um, go with teaching and learning and that also um, will be used within um, creation of the curriculum and how that would reflect on your program ultimately with the nqf level that you are in so which theories that you want to be having as part of your qualification and if so why so all of that and then um, the model of program delivery so we were introduced to many models that were currently or are currently running within the institution and how they are providing that and what is the reason for them providing in that mode so um for example one can run a qualification of a nqf level 7 or 8 as a part time it can be full time it can be um, distance learning so depending on um who your customer is in this uh, scenario who your learner is where they are based the whole demographics of it and on that basis we decide on the program delivery and um at the end obviously knowing the institutional or the faculty teaching and learning strategy and how that should align within the qualification as the teaching and learning strategy so that was really um a exposure that um you would really enjoy um the seventh session was um um cons hey difficult but it was like really thinking and saying that being an academic is not that easy because it's not just being a lecturer lecturing mocking giving the mocks to students feedback to students and going and then you done it's much more than that it's understanding the assessment policy it's knowing what are the forms of assessment that you're doing if you're doing formative what is it if you're doing summative how is it contributing um um to the development and progress of the learners if that is making any difference if we use a certain mode of assessment in that nqf level the assessment strategies whatever is the mode of assessment what strategy are we using to assess our students the moderation if it involves internal moderation but does it involve external moderation does the qualification involve um, direct engagement with industry people from the industry um when it comes to external moderation because it it being in a nqf level it is in so yeah so those uh, parts were really um, the highlights of that session and it was very informative at the same time session 8 was um like the boss of all sessions because we were introduced to what we all add in when it comes to adding information in our subject guides or the study guides is our learning outcomes exit level outcomes graduate attributes 
But when it was really um, going deep down that and reading and understanding what is it that comes into exit level outcomes, how you actually come down to formulating your exit level outcome, so which is obviously speaking from your learning outcome and your assessment criteria. Um, we were given like a lot of information. We were um, discussing that in the face-to-face -face workshop sessions as well. It's actually a lot to take in, but I think um, a point of note at this point of time that I can give is uh, one needs to really think what is it that you want to add into your curriculum and then um, go back and decide on how does then in that situation your exit level outcome or graduate attributes look like. So it really comes down from the student persona. How do you see the student um, coming into that NQF level and undergoing that course and what should be the exit level outcome for that? Um, so I took this uh, phrase from one of the presentations that we were uh, given in the workshop is what is learned and how it is learned. And why I felt it um, very vital at this point is whatever um, the students learn and the way that we let them learn that the, the process that they go through with us while learning is so important because it indirectly gives back um, sort of a feedback to us saying that um, the learning has to happen in a certain way, be it constructive or be it face-to-face -face or online or engaging or interactive. And that l feedback actually helps us in building up qualifications similar or higher to that because at the same time, it's learning for us and uh, that learning helps us in a situation like this where we have to co-create or design or redesign a existing qualification. The last um, session was um, the highlight of all the sessions because it was um, kind of uh, putting together everything in a nutshell in the form of templates. So there was no um, other way other than saying that it's just see it and do it because it's all mentioned in the template. Just follow and follow the instructions only and go through the templates um, read through the blue inked uh, messages that was um, added by the institution for us to further understand what all needs to go within that segment of the template, what policies we need to refer to, what areas that we need to be aware of, what level descriptors we should be knowing. So that session was like a completely uh, mind-blowing session because that was a nutshell of what we did but it's just knowing that how do you put all of that in here. So you start with the HEQC template. It's like building up the scenario and then coming down to DHEAD and SACWA, which is more or less adding similar information um, that you have already included in your HEQC and then your subject template where you speak about the learning outcomes, the textbooks that you're going to use, the assessment strategies, the teaching and learning strategies, assessment criteria. So it's basically everything about the subject. And um, yeah, so that's why I feel like attendance is a must in that session because you like literally browse through, indirectly browse through all that you have done in the previous session. So that was like a definite for us. Um, so in a nutshell to wrap up saying that it's a journey like any other journey and not just a workshop. So just don't give up. Um, try working together. It's difficult, but it's doable. So a point of advice here would be um, um, create a team or a group of people that you feel that can contribute to creating the curriculum that you sort of um, gelling well with and you can share commonality of thoughts and understanding with them. And because it's all about that and it really works well if you can um, work together with certain people and make sure that it happens because it's not a one-man army. Um, it's not. You have to um, be on board, on the same boat with other people joining you. Otherwise, it gets difficult. Um, then the information that we were given and you will, of course, be given in the, quali in the workshop is it's a handful. It's tedious at one point of time. 
especially reading up everything uh, with the existing uh, workload that we in and making sure we hand in the homework at time um, that we been will be given as well. Um, so the best advice is just be consistent. Just don't uh, miss the track. It's it gets difficult. There will be like sitting late nights, early mornings, working up, submitting your tasks. But just consistency is the only word that I can suggest here because then you can link from point one to point B to point C, and missing any one of them can be very difficult. And also being consistent helps the facilitator to give you valuable feedback, which we were really um, um, lucky to get that because that feedback helped us on tracking back what we did, moving on what we're going to do and what we're doing currently, what we shouldn't be doing. So yeah, be consistent and you know that the oyster is yours. Um, at the end, um, the outcome, because that's what we all think about when we enroll in a workshop, what is it for me? Because if what next, even if I'm um, redesigning or designing the curriculum, that's it. And um, so to only be part of that, is that all I have to go through now? So um, I think all I can say at this point is you will be proud of yourself because you would know that there has been so much that you didn't know and now you know um, and also something that are you never going to forget. You will probably start having your own um, sessions in the department where you can share that with the existing staff and colleagues and enlighten them for the ones who couldn't attend for whatever reason. So, yeah, it will be that proud moment at the end saying that, oh, I have learned so much. So at the end, thank you very much. I want to end off saying that we work best when we work together. So please make sure that you work together with the team that you're in, with the current um, HEQSF team of facilitators. They are just amazing. Work with them and you will get the best that you uh, wanted to be when you thought of enrolling in this workshop. And at the end, thank you very much, Daniela and team. Thank you very much, Barbara for giving us this opportunity and uh, making sure that we get what we wanted to get while we were in the workshop. And thank you very much again for giving me this platform. Um, all the best to you all for the ones who are busy currently designing their new qualification and will be designing it in future. And thank you very much again. Have a good day further.